This is In It Together with Wayne and Sharon Gill. Welcome back to In It Together with Wayne and Sharon Gill, where we talk about the hard and the soft side of business. So far, we've been talking about the four pillars of business. And what are those again, Wayne? Well, last time we spoke about the profit pillar, and we also spoke about the ethical pillar. Today, we're gonna cover the legal pillar and also the social pillar. Well, on the legal pillar, I think, you know, just based on your background, you have a better person to cover that one. Yeah. Well, I, I, I'm indeed a, a licensed attorney, but I, I think I need to say this. I am not giving any legal advice on this video or any of these videos that we will do. But uh, to cover generally what we're talking about when we say the legal pillar, it's simple. Not only does your business have to obey like the laws of finance and the laws of business, but your business has to actually obey the law. That is <laughs> the law of the civil authorities within the jurisdiction where your business operates. And look, we know there's a whole other economy out there that's filled with illegal business. And there's lots of funny things that happen within businesses. But if you're gonna run a true business, you have to make sure that your business is established on a firm legal pillar. No illegal activities. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that there are a lot that's involved with that that we can't cover in this yes. episode, but we'll be able to cover, you know, in future episodes. And when we talk about the social responsibility of a business, we like to call it purpose-centered business. And that's really important for us, you know, based on our own core values. Having a business that's bigger than profits, um, it just really means a lot to us. And um, now, I know that you were telling me about a group of billionaires that had put together some kind of a consortium. Yes. Yeah, um, I'm sure some of the folks out there have heard um, Warren Buffett and Bill and Melinda Gates have come together and actually put together a giving pledge whereby I guess it's over a hundred and maybe 60 odd billionaires wow. in the world so far have made a pledge that they're gonna give away at least half of their wealth um, before their death. And you might be saying to yourself, well, you know, Bill and Melinda Gates can do that, but I'm a small company, I'm a two-person operation. We can always have excuses, but having a company with a social responsibility as part of its soul, um, you don't have to be a billionaire company. I remember when, if you remember when, when we were just two years old as a company, we decided that we were going to do something to impact our community. And we thought about what was of value to us. And at the mm. time, both of us are immigrants. I'm sure you can tell from my <laughs> accent. Um, we're both from Jamaica. Wayne came here when he was seven. I came here when I was 20. So I still have my accent. But we thought, you know, what was important to us at the time was education. We felt like education had propelled us to success. And we wanted to invest back into the minority community in this area. And so what we did we decided to sponsor a kid in elementary school with just books and um, some clothing for middle school. So we identified a school in the community and we asked the principal if they could identify a minority student who they felt had the most potential. And they did. And as you know, Wayne, that young lady who we identified about 17, 18 years ago is now a doctor. And that is another long story, but it just shows you that, you know, one small investment can impact a life because that young woman has been in our lives for the last 17 years. And we first met yeah, her more. when she was in elementary school. So don't think you have to be Bill and Melinda Gates to have an impact. Yeah. Uh, that's so true, Sharon. You know, a lot of times we look at the billions. You know, we look at th just this big thing out here when, in fact, you can make such an impact with one child. What can you do for one kid? What can you do for one community organization in, in your neighborhood? What can you do for the person across the street? And we tend to look beyond all of that and we look at the billions when, in fact, our businesses have the power to make tremendous impact in our communities for the good. 
Something that you always say in business, which I really love, is you know we're either part of the problem ah, or right. part of the solution. I'm surprised I didn't just say that. <laughs> <laughs> I always say. That. But you're always yeah. saying that, and yeah, yeah. you know it has stayed with us and with me, you know, as a as a CEO for years. You know, part of the solution. We like to complain about the community, but what are you doing? You know, what yeah. can you do yes. to make a difference? Business should be more than making money. That's important, but we should have a social footprint in our community. Yeah. So. Well, uh, yes, just to piggyback off of that, Sharon, look, we couldn't sponsor the, spo the scholarship for that child, right? Or other charitable endeavors that we've done over the years without the business being able to make a profit, right? So we understand that your business at the end of the day, as we said, and you gotta go back and look at last week's um, uh, episode, a business must make a profit to truly be a business, but a business we believe must also have a soul. And that's the purpose-centered pillar. And I'll just add this one little caveat too. When your company is known as a company that has a social responsibility, um, you know, culture, mm. your, your staff, your clients, your vendors, they will think differently about your organization. We know this to be a fact. So, so now it's your turn. How can you make an impact in your community? Drop us some comments, drop us a line, and we'll see you on the next In It Together with Wayne. Yes, I'm Wayne. And, and Sharon.